Hey guys, uh, this is Dooley. So in this video, we are going to talk about threading in C Sharp. So threading is uh, essentially creating a new execution path for your for in, within your program. So this will this essentially allows you to sort of uh, take a program and say tell the computer hey go ahead and take this program and do something for me while on my main thread I'm doing something else so you have a different execution path you can share data with it uh, from the main thread and you can even pass uh, data to it uh, from the main thread and you can start many of these uh, threads and you can have them do things for you essentially parallel to what uh, uh, you're doing in your main thread so in in this series of videos we are going to explore uh, how threads work we're going to use them ex extensively and we're going to uh, look at the different techniques of how to manage uh, when you have several threads uh, uh, running in this manner so first thing we are going to do is we are going to write a function that uh, we can have a thread perform or execute so this function it's going to be a simple function that just prints something we don't need to return anything so let's just print from This is just going to be a console.log statement. Ah, I said log. Okay, so let's do some string interpolation here. Now the the thread class has a, a property that allows you to uh, pick up uh, the current thread you are in. So let's just say we are printing from that thread. Current thread. And let's say it has a name. Okay. So as long as we give the thread, we're going to start a name. Uh, that's the name that's going to be printed here. So let's go ahead and start this thread. And the way we tell our thread what to do is by passing the name of that function in the constructor here. Print from thread. Okay. The thread has not started yet. We created it. Now let's give it a name before we start it. th.name. Let's call it child thread. And let's start it. Okay, now let's see what happens. All right, uh, we have a print statement from the child thread. Now there's nothing in this program that tells us that we're doing anything in parallel or uh, concurrently. So the way we could sort of prove that is by having the main thread do something else. So let's uh, first of all give a name to the main thread uh, using that same property uh, we used earlier. Thread that current. Current thread that name. So we're giving the main thread a name. Let's call it main thread. So this goes off. I should put my comment statements here. This goes off to do something else. So it goes out 
of the main thread to go do something else. So now uh, we could actually have the main thread call the print function. Okay. So this here is happening in the main thread. Okay. And this will happen in the child thread. So if we run this program, we're expecting two print statements, one coming from the main thread and one coming from the child thread. So let's go ahead and find out. Okay. All right. So we get a print statement from the child thread and a print statement from the main thread. Now, if I run this enough times, I will see, well, actually, the second time I ran it, I went into this problem. Okay, you can see that the in, in, in the first time we ran it, child thread printed first, and the second time we ran it, main thread printed first. Now, in the way we've written this program, there's no way for us to know which one's going to print first. In fact, let me try this again. Okay, main thread printed first here main thread again. Looks like the main thread is running, but there's no way for me to guarantee. Here we go. There's the child thread. It's back on top. So there's no way for me to guarantee which is going to come first. Now, there are several techniques, uh, sort, of, sort, sort of like uh, synchronization. You can block one thread and, and make sure it waits for another one. You can uh, uh, have one sleep until the other one finishes and so on uh, so we're going to look at all these things in the in the following videos we're also going to look at how we share data between one th between the main and the child thread how we can pass data from main thread to child thread and so on so in that the next few videos uh, we're going to uh, get into threading quite a bit um, if you this was the tu this tutorial so we learned how to uh, create a new thread, give it a name, and have it do something for us. We also see that uh, uh, doing thread programming uh, is uh, non-deterministic, or at least uh, uh, if not managed properly, uh, can be non-deterministic. So uh, got to be careful when you're using threads and, and you know precisely uh, when one thread is going to do what and if that's good pro for your program. So uh, please subscribe if you want to see, uh, uh, if you want to know when the, those videos are going to pop up. Uh, hit the like button if you like the videos and, and throw me any questions if you have any. Alright, thanks. I'll see you next time.